Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is using the Power BI REST API to list our gateways. Let's go. Okay, so why is this episode important? So number one, this session does complement our previous session on installing gateways using PowerShell. Now I have a, an image of that video below in the lower right hand corner. We'll also include a link in the description itself. Because if you've used that strategy to go ahead and to create gateways through an automated process and you've got a service principal or a service account that is always part of the installation, this video will be more valuable than if you don't use that approach. And the reason for that is that the Power BI API runs in the context of the user that's calling it. So if this user that's calling the API doesn't have access to another gateway, it's not going to show up in this listing. But if you've used that approach so that they always are because they're always the one installing it, then you're going to see this information return. Now, and the reason for that is this API technically doesn't run in an admin scope. It's more of a user scope as a result. Now, if you do want to look at an alternative, I would suggest looking at those PowerShell commandlets because those can run in an admin scope and as a result, you can get more information back. But in this case, what I was hoping to do was to use a flow in order to capture this information so that I could catalog it. And naturally, when you're in flow, you're talking about connectors, you're talking about APIs, you wanna be able to like loop over a, a list or an array. And that was the core goal of this session itself. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Now, before we get too far down the solution path here, I do wanna call out that you will need some admin privileges in order to use this API that we're talking about. So number one, and this was disabled in my tenant, uh, so this would be something that uh, you would need to confirm in your specific tenant, and that is allowing a service principal to go ahead and to call a Power BI API. Uh, initially, when I was trying to get this to work, I was essentially getting an error, which was fairly descriptive. It led me to enabling this setting, but basically it's saying that the service principal doesn't have access to go ahead and call these APIs. So inside of the Power BI Admin Center, and you can see the URL above, click on Admin Portal, then head over to Tenant Settings. Tenant Settings, you'll see that there's a whole list of options that can be modified. Do look for Developer Settings, and then you can go ahead and enable Service Principles to use Power BI APIs. Now, in addition, you do have some additional controls here, depending upon the nature of your organization. You could try to restrict access to specific security groups. I'll leave that up for you. I didn't pursue that for since this is just a demo itself. Now, the other thing is, and I cover this in much more detail in the prior video that uh, when we used the PowerShell commandlets, and so I will refer you to that video to go find more details, but another thing that we're going to use here is the ability to read this information. Now, this, both of these settings are there because of the PowerShell. In the PowerShell, we are actually adding gateways. As a result, we need a write permission. Here, we're not doing any writing. This should be sufficient in order for you to go ahead and to access that. But do note that that does require the uh, admin, um, admin consent as well. So that would be step number two from that perspective. Because I already had this set up for the PowerShell, I am just leveraging this configuration. Once again, if you want to find out more information about how to set this up, go check out that prior video. 
Okay, well, with all of that said, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you a demo. Now, what I'll do here is I'll just explain what's going on. Uh, I'll include the URL, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to have a get method against a specific API. This is a Power BI API URL. I will include that for you. Now, as part of our authentication, we're going to use that service principle that we just talked about. And so we've got Active Directory OAuth. And what we can do is go ahead and select that from our dropdown from our authentication and note this is in an advanced option. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use some of the settings from the Azure portal and that app registration or that service principle configuration. So we're going to have our tenant ID and that's going to come from the Azure portal. I've you know essentially um, obfuscated this so that you can't copy them because these are specific to my tenant. The audience, I'll include this as a as part of the um, description as well. This essentially is the underlying API, the Power BI API, that we're going to be going ahead and calling. And so as a result, we need to be able to refer to this specific uh, value itself. And this comes back to the permissions that we provided here. Uh, we added a permission for the Power BI service. If you click on this link here, it will actually give you this specific URL. Uh, so that's where I'm, I'm obtaining that URL. Client ID, once again, from the Azure portal, uh, that's gonna be something specific to me and my implementation. We've got our credential type, which is secret, and also we've got a secret that comes from the Azure portal. So I've blocked that out so you can't uh, see that either. That's something specific to my tenant. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna just run this flow on a schedule and then we're gonna take a look at the response, we'll parse it, and then we'll be able to determine how many gateways are returned. So let's go ahead, let's jump and see that demo in action. Okay, so we have our flow here in our inside of the Power Automate Maker Portal. What I'm doing here is I just have this on a schedule, and so every day this will go ahead and run. And the core goal here would be to take this information and then store it in some sort of repository. It could be SharePoint, it could be a database, really up to you. I haven't implemented that here because that's not really the core goal of this video. Next, we have that HTTP action that I talked about previously. I'm not gonna go through all the settings because I just did that, but here we can see that we're gonna go ahead and call the Power BI Gateway API itself. Now this is going to return essentially an untyped message response and so what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to put together a schema around that. So what you would typically do is add your recurrence, run and call your API, look at the output from your run history, copy that raw output and then go ahead and add a parse JSON action to your flow, generate from sample, paste that sample doc in there and then we can go ahead and put some structure behind it. And so that's exactly what I have here. This is just a notepad where I've basically been able to take the run history and paste it into the notepad here and then what I can do is leverage this to go ahead and to create from a sample and then I will have essentially a schema around it. This would allow me to then loop through this array of, see we can see we've got an array here, of gateways and then I could go ahead and feed that information into some sort of data repository. Now all I've got going on here is I've just got a simple expression. I just want to be able to capture the number of gateways that we do see. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll save this and then I will test it. Okay, and now that has run. And so here we can see now we've got typed data um, as a result of using parse JSON. So I could go ahead and then, you know, get the name, get the gateway ID, and then I can also pull and I could do further extraction to get additional details, such as the gateway version uh, that has been installed and the machine uh, that it was actually installed on as well, right? The gateway machine right here. So we could actually go ahead and have typed data so that we can feed other systems. Now, the reason why I had this here was because I thought it was a little bit odd. I certainly have more than three gateways in this tenant, and I was trying to understand why am I only seeing three? 
And the reason why I was only seeing three, this goes back to some of that intro content in the video itself. The reason why I see three is because this service principle has been involved in the installation of three gateways and subsequently is an admin of these three gateways. So the other gateways that are, are basically in the tenant aren't showing up here because they were installed by different users. And so that's the, the limitation of this specific API. It is user scoped, not admin scoped. So if you're starting fresh, uh, you can go ahead and develop a strategy where you go ahead and install all gateways using a service account or a service principal as we talked about in that video, then this doesn't become much of a problem. Now, the other thing you can do is you don't have to start from scratch and reinstall. You could also write a script. Uh, we talk about it in that video where we can go ahead and add essentially users to a gateway. And so what we could also do is add our service principal to existing gateways itself. That's a PowerShell command that, that PowerShell script that you could run and leverage those PowerShell commandlets that we talk about in that video to go ahead and add a this service principal as an admin to all of the gateways and subsequently you would get all of this information coming from a user scoped gateway here. So that's one of the call outs. I would call it a limitation, but it is something that can reasonably be worked around if you go ahead and build some automation. So with that, uh, I'll leave the demo there. Uh, that's how you go ahead and call the Power BI Gateway API. And this is the essentially the gateway listing itself. I'll include the link in the description. And you know this is the, the, the real caveat here. Um, if we go ahead and look at the admin operations, we're not going to see anything related to gateways. And so that's why the only place we can go is gateways here. And then we can see that this is the call bot. It only returns a list of gateways for which the user is an admin. All right. Thanks for checking out this video and we'll see you again shortly on the channel. All right. Thanks for checking out another video. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to go ahead and do so. You can find me at Weirzy. You're obviously on YouTube, so thanks again for checking out my content. Likes, subscribes, and comments are always appreciated. Go ahead and take care of that. See you again soon. Take care. Bye.